have seen two twins, nothing but the blood, first, second, and the last. Downstairs, pray to be with each and every one of them, Lord. Pray to be with our church. Pray for each and everything we do here will be done according to your will. It's all in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Let's turn to 361, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
so good seeing all of you here. It's good getting a little bit back to normal. We have uh, our Wednesday night classes uh, starting back, and so we're going to have a class through the summer for the kids who are in Masters Club, and uh, they'll be in one class. We'll probably have uh, five year five years old and up to sixth grade, uh, and then uh, the teenagers are meeting uh, tonight. This will be their first time back, and so. I'm sure they'll be excited about that. So just looking forward to kind of getting back into uh, more of a normal routine. Probably the thing that we will hold off still, uh, at least for Sunday morning, or Sunday night and Wednesday night, I think doing the services the way we have, uh, we're able to spread those, spread people out a little bit uh, with the six foot social distancing as much as we can. Um, Sunday morning will probably still continue at least for the next week or two uh, the 9 o'clock service for our seniors, for those that want to come, and then uh, 11 o'clock service for anybody who wants to come. So the seniors can choose whichever one they uh, feel comfortable coming to. Um, we're going to go to uh, the Lord in prayer here in just a few minutes. So um, let me get some, give you some prayer requests and get some prayer requests from you. We're going to start our prayer sheet uh, basically from scratch. So I've got some prayer requests here. There's some uh, some of our church family that was on our prayer list before we went into uh, this thing, I'm going to put them back on the prayer list uh, because I know, um, you know, of course, they, their situation, they still need prayer. But some specific things here to pray about, uh, and then we'll get some prayer requests from you. Uh, pray for Tommy, if you would. He's going in for surgery on the 12th. That's the plan. That's uh, next Friday. And, uh, and then... Uh, He's got some things he has to get done this week, so just pray for traveling, safety for them. Also, uh, Kevin Cook, pray continued healing there for him as he broke, fell, uh, I think it's last week, fell off the roof fixing his roof, uh, broke a couple ribs and his collarbone. Uh, Ellen Lambert, uh, continue to pray for her healing as she uh, has had surgery. Trina, also her continue, continued healing. Uh, Trina Hurley, she's had surgery. Uh, and Sharon Mullen, she... Uh, it's going to have a doctor's point. I, I couldn't remember if it was this week. Uh, my dates are still discombobulated. I'm, I didn't even realize it was June. I'm still stuck somewhere in May or April. And uh, so just, uh, she had told me Sunday, and I know she told me the date, but it didn't register that we're actually in June now. So I can't remember if it was this week or if it's next week. But pray for her. What is it? I think it's tomorrow. Tomorrow? I think for the October. Okay, so the 4th. Okay. So I knew it was coming up here soon from what she talked about, but it didn't register with me. So uh, pray for her. We're hoping she gets a great report. Uh, she had a great report last time she went, and so we're hoping that her leg continues to heal uh, nicely there. Um, and then, of course, uh, we want to pray for our nation. Our nation is in, uh, I think it's just mainly, you know, God's hand is upon us. I think really that's what's going on. If we're gonna, I mean, we can sit here and um, it's not fun to talk about God's judgment and God's chastening. But the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And our God has been everything. I'm talking as a nation as a whole. Our God has been everything but the Lord. Uh, you know, we have, we have so many fools who say there is no God. They want to live their life their way. And, uh, and these things going on. You know, people might look at them like they're, you know, one political party versus another political party. And, and none of that honestly really matters. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The battle is not with one another. There's a spiritual battle going on. And that's what's really happening. Uh, the devil's just, he's pulled out all the stops. You know, his time is short. And uh, there's a lot of people. Some of them are even good people. Some of them are even saved people that uh, the devil can use and uh, he can deceive many others. So we need to pray for our nation. Uh, you know, these riots and things going on that's just simply foolishness. Uh, no excuse for it. Uh, I understand uh, you know, the death of that individual, uh, George Floyd. Uh, I understand that was justice will be served. You know, we still need to support law enforcement. They've got a difficult job to do. Are there bad apples? There's bad apples in everything. There's bad apples in preachers. You know, there's bad apples everywhere. And uh, so that doesn't mean you throw them all into the same basket. And uh, you can't lump them all together. So we just need to pray for these situations. We need some heartfelt prayer. Uh, the Bible says the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And so that's what, uh, you know, we need to do. 
And so let me get, we're going to pray here in just a moment, but let me get some prayer requests from you all. I get prayer requests that we're going to add to our prayer list, and I'll get that, Lord willing, printed out here next week. Yes? Okay, can you spell the last name again? C-A-T-R-O-N, I think. C-A-T-R-O-N. And um, Rita Underwood. So you have stage four bladder cancer. And Rita Underwood. Okay. So we'll pray for them. Any others? Yes, Pat. Marion Ballard has pancreatic cancer. That's M A R I O N. And then another one is Kareem. Kareem, how do you spell that? C O R E E M. Met. M E T T. Has lung cancer. So Kareem Met, lung cancer, and Marion Ballard, um, pancreatic cancer. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to be uh, with these requests, and, and then we'll go through some announcements here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and pray, and just leave in prayer, but I'm going to ask you, if you would, to pray. Uh, you're praying right where you're at, and we need to, we really need to get a hold of the throne of God. And the Bible says, if any uh, agree upon earth, any two or three agree upon earth, touching anything, you know, the Lord's going to take care of it. He's going to hear it, and he'll deal with it. Now, it might not be in our timing. It might not be in our way. But I believe with all my heart, there are enough righteous people in America that if we, we have a day of prayer, but we don't need a day of prayer. We need years of prayer. We need to have years of prayer where uh, we need to overturn some laws in our country. Just because something is legal doesn't mean it's right. And uh, we need to have some laws overturned. And, uh, you know, we need to see God uh, as head of our nation once again. And that's what our nation was founded upon, and we have gotten a long way away from that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, pray for these requests, and uh, you pray as I pray here. Father, we come to you, Lord, asking that you will be with us today. And, and Lord, I'm thankful that, that you do love us. And, Lord, I'm thankful that, Lord, you will not tolerate uh, our sin as a nation any longer. And Lord, we see all kinds of judgment coming upon us, and we know there's a spiritual fight that's taking place. But Lord, even through all this, even though it may seem dark, the times may seem uncertain. We've had this COVID-19 thing we're still dealing with. We don't hear much about it anymore, but it's still there. And now we hear of all these other things going on in all these different cities. Lord, we know this. There are still souls getting saved. There are still people who are wondering what's happening. And we have the answers. We have the truth. We know what's going on. We know that we are close to uh, the time when you come back for your bride to church and, and you call us home. And we have such a short time. Lord, help us to be faithful as Christians. And uh, we do pray for our leaders. It doesn't matter if they're uh, governors of our states doesn't matter if it's uh, president, both senators, House of Representatives, uh, state representatives, uh, even on the local level, mayors and people like that, Lord. Lord, I'm praying for those souls that are not saved. I'm asking, Lord, that you will save them. I'm asking, Lord, that you will do, you'll stir their heart, uh, that they might be receptive to the truth of the gospel. And Lord, we know no one is beyond being saved. And uh, Father, I pray also for those who are saved. I pray that each and every leader, whether they're saved or not, we know the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So, Lord, we're praying and we're claiming that scripture, Lord, and asking that you will control their hearts and their minds and their decisions. And, and that, Lord, you will turn us as a nation back to you. Help us not just to get back to the status quo, because the status quo is what God sent to this mess in the first place. Lord, help us to turn back to righteousness. Help us to turn back to you with all of our hearts, not just part way, but go all the way. And uh, Father, it's got to start with your people. It's got to start with us. And Lord, I pray you help us to do that. 
We pray for these other needs and these other requests that were mentioned. Uh, these dealing with cancer, what a serious thing it is. And, and uh, Lord, so many other health issues that have kind of been almost swept under the rug and forgotten about, except by those families who are still dealing with it. Lord, these are still very serious things. And, and uh, some of these individuals who are in stage four cancer, Lord, I'm praying that you will, Lord, just uh, do what you can to heal them. And uh, we know you're the great physician. You can heal to the uttermost. And we want your will to be accomplished. And uh, so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for Marion Ballard and Kareem Met, and then also uh, Eric Catron. Pray for them, Lord. Pray also for Rita Underwood. Pray that you meet her needs. Uh, Lord, I pray for Sharon Mall. She'll get a great report from the doctor. And uh, Lord, we trust that that would be the case. And, and then, Lord, I pray for those healing that uh, either have had accidents or had surgeries. I uh, pray for Kevin Cook and Ellen Lambert and Trina Hurley. pray that you will watch over each one of them. And Lord, uh, just help their bones and everything to heal completely and uh, totally so they get back to normal as soon as possible. And then, Lord, also pray for Thomas. He's getting ready to go into surgery. Lord, we know that he's dealt with some back issues for a long time. And pray, Lord, this will be something to give him some tremendous relief. And I just ask that you will watch over him and protect him uh, during this time. And, and I pray you give the doctors wisdom to know exactly what it is they need to do. And, and just guide their hands, give, guide their thoughts, even through the surgery, Lord. And uh, we thank you because we know this is the day that you have made, Lord. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And thank you so much for us being able to gather together here and worship you. And help us to do it, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask and pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, a couple, uh, actually some announcements I need to just let you know. Uh, don't forget Team Banquet Friday, June 12th. That's 8 p.m. That's coming up. Uh, and again, our Sunday morning services. Now, this Sunday morning, Brother Harper is going to be here with us. And uh, so he's going to preach the 9 o'clock service and the 11 o'clock service. But we're trying to do something. This is our 25th anniversary in the ministry uh, for uh, Richie and Kimberly. And so they, everything started right here at this church. They've been coming here uh, about every every year for several years. And then it became every year and a half. Uh, I think it's been that way since I've been here. It may be a little bit longer. Um, but just thankful for what God has used them, how he's used them in their ministry. So we're going to try to do something special for them on... Uh, this Sunday morning. Um, I lost my place here in my notes. Uh, what we're going to do, we, our tithes and offerings, we're not going to pass the offering plate probably for at least another month. Uh, what we've been doing, if you have tithes and offerings, I've got the box here, just set it on a chair in the back, you can drop it in on your way out. Sunday what we'll do is we'll have the tithes and offering box back there. But if you have a love offering or something extra you'd like to give to the Harpers, uh, I'll have a Another chair sitting beside it would be just the offering plate. You can put a love offering in there if you'd like to. Uh, if you want to write them a check, just um, if you make it out to the church and then the memo line, put Richie Harper, uh, then we'll make sure that it gets to them. Um, so anyway, we're going to do that. And then also, I've asked you Sunday if you would think about a word of testimony. Uh, this is for both services, for the 9 o'clock service, for our seniors, and then also for... And let me say this also about the senior service. I keep calling it a senior service, but if you have underlying health conditions, uh, you don't have to be a senior. You know, uh, we want to try to protect those folks in our church as much as we can. So if you don't feel comfortable coming to the other services, then that's understandable. But uh, if you do have those underlying health conditions and feel better coming to the early service, I'll just tell you the 11 o'clock service, if you haven't been here, we had, it was getting pretty packed. We had about 78 or so. Uh, now, since the kids started in junior church, that took some of them away, so we were able to spread out a little bit more. But, uh, but anyway, that was uh, a great Sunday, <clears throat> and we're looking forward to another great Sunday with that. But also, for the Harpers, um, I was wondering, how many of you would be interested, or do you feel comfortable doing it? There's a couple things we can do. He had, They have to leave I was trying to figure out what to do about lunch for them for Sunday. Um, now we can do something special for them as a church if you all feel comfortable doing that. We could have a meal uh, if you feel comfortable. They can't stay very long. They need to get on the 
road, they've got about an eight hour trip to Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, there's no certain time they have to be in, but they can't get, probably can have to leave by no later than two, I would say. Uh, but anyway, if you, if you feel comfortable doing a meal with everybody bringing a couple side dishes or something, we can have a meal and we'll take care of the drinks and stuff. We can do that in the activity building. But if you're not comfortable with that, we just have a few people that would be interested, then we can just do some sandwiches, uh, you know, something for them. And if nobody feels comfortable doing any of that, then, you know, we'll just feed them at our house. So uh, either one, we're okay with. But I was just wondering what you all thought. Uh, are you all okay with the meal? Do you, everybody's okay with that? Or do I, would it be easier to show, have a show of hands? Let's do that. How many feels comfortable with a meal and the activity of it? So quite a few. How many feels comfortable just the sandwiches? No one said How many feels comfortable having at our house? <laughs> <laughs> How many feels comfortable with me cooking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what we'll do uh, now, I was trying to think of how to work this because I know for the 9 o'clock service, if we have a meal after the 11 o'clock service, that's going to put those people in a little bit of a bind. So uh, there's really not any other way that I can think of to do it because uh, we don't have enough time in between, and I know he's not going to want to eat right before he preaches. Uh, so what we'll probably do, if, if you feel comfortable, because we can be in the activity building and then make sure we spread out, uh, we'll make sure to have plenty of tables down and stuff like that just so people don't have to be all bunched up together. Um, that, what we'll do is we'll have it over there so people can spread out and then just open it up for whoever comes to both services, if you, the nine o'clock service if you want to come back. Uh, and so if you want to bring some covered dish, uh, how do we normally do a meal? You know, two covered dishes, I guess, or whatever you bring for your family or people coming with you. And uh, we'll try to make sure we have some other things. I don't know much about food. I just eat whatever was there. If it was dessert, I would just eat dessert. I'm good with it. So, um, so whatever, uh, I'll, I'll pass that on to a couple of the ladies who are helping out with that. Uh, we have a little plaque we're going to uh, just give them. We were able to order just a little commemorative plaque, just something special uh, to go along with that. And uh, I think it's, it's important to uh, just give honor uh, that way. I'm kind of glad the Lord worked it out the way he did and, and that they are able to uh, stop here and be with us. So anyway, that's what we'll do for Sunday um, and we'll just go with that. Now also, uh, I want to give you an update on the property. Uh, I contacted them again because this seems like it's been dragging out forever. I was hoping we'd already have the playground halfway built, but uh, we're waiting on one trustee to sign whatever it is they're supposed to sign and then I guess it comes to us and the deal is closed at that point, it comes to us, and, and then we purchase the property and everything's finalized. So uh, I asked them how long that would be, they said, well, it's just as long as it takes them to get here to sign it. So that's what I've been praying for, whoever that is, help them get there and just put their signature on a piece of paper so we can get that thing moved. And uh, so that's where that's at. Also for Cold Wars, now the Cold Wars is June 22nd to the 24th, and we uh, we have the flyers out. We don't have any kids we're going to have. Uh, I've been watching the governor's guidelines and all these scoring things, all this stuff coming out. And things are always changing. We're going to try to do what we can, but we're going to try to have as normal cold wars as possible. Our times are not going to change, still 5.30 to 8.30. Uh, the only difference is we're going to have three days instead of five. Uh, the structure will be pretty much the same. Uh, we'll be missing, I think, a few workers, but I think most of our workers can be there during that time. Um, and anyway, uh, we do have the little flyers we send out in the mail. Uh, Mike can use some help with that. We were able to get those printed. He has a couple boxes, I'm guessing, of them. Uh, if you are able to, we can use about three volunteers to <coughs> count. What you do is count them in groups of 100, and then throw, there'll be a rubber band, I guess, throw around them or put a rubber band around them or something. You just sort them in hundreds is all you do. Uh, so 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. You just keep counting out to 100. And I don't know how many is in a box. 800. 800 in a box. So uh, if we can get about three volunteers, that will speed that up so we can get those ready to be mailed. Did you guys put the registration thing on there? Yeah. So I need to get on there and redo that. Okay, we kept it pretty close to last year, whatever we had last year. <laughs> I just have to set up something new because it has to be redone okay. every year. So, 
So do we have anybody else that can count? When are you going to count? I think it's just going to give you a box and then you can bring it back Sunday. Okay. So more Sue and Bali and Andrew. Okay. So there's three right there. So I appreciate you all helping with that. And that will uh, speed that up. And uh, that way we can have them ready for the mailings and all that stuff and uh, get that done. All right. Well, that's all the announcements I have. And, uh, yeah. Yes, hey, hey. <laughs> you. Early voting. Yes. Don't forget, uh, June, it's June 9th is the official date. Right, that's pretty Early voting is going on right now. Yeah. So don't forget Saturday. that. In West Virginia. I don't know. I'm guessing it would be in, I don't know what it is. Is that Virginia. Peter's Town? Huh? Where are you going? Or is that Peter's Town? Peter's Town oh. is Town Hall, where I think family <laughs> is down there. So. 8.30 to 4.30, except on Saturday, it's 9 to 5. Okay. Anybody know what's going on in Virginia? Do they already have their or? I didn't hear, so. Okay. Still closed. They're still closed. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing the difference, just a few miles. <laughs> so. All right, we're going to have another song, so Robert, come and lead to song. <laughs> Stand between 264 in the garden. Working in the measure of every part, 
maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. I'd like to draw your attention to verse 15. It says, but speaking the truth in love, and then this next phrase here, may grow up into him in all things. You know, the ultimate yardstick of life is how much you grow as a Christian. That's the ultimate yardstick. And your whole life as a Christian, the, from the moment you get saved, that's when you became born again. You started out as a babe in Christ. And then your whole Christian life is summed up basically how much you have grown since that time. So that's the kind of the title of the message, the long title. The ultimate yardstick of life is how much you grow. Let's pray and we'll jump right into it. Father, we thank you again for the word of God and I pray that you will help us as we look here at the scriptures, open our hearts and our understanding. And thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of your people and thank you for their prayers. And, and uh, Lord, I'm so thankful they prayed for one another, they encouraged one another. And what a blessing it is to have people also who... Uh, have been in contact with each other and checking on the folks and, uh, through this time that we've been apart. And, and uh, Lord, I just thank you for them and I thank you for those who have been an extra blessing to other people. I pray that you will guide and direct our thoughts now here to the scriptures. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And I did, as I was praying here, I did want to tell you all I, I appreciate so much. I'm glad you know, God gives us all, as we saw here, God give some past or some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. But I'm thankful God also gives uh, some people, it's, I don't know what it is, but it, I think it's a gift, but they're just very thoughtful. They think of, you know, sending a card, a letter, a phone call, uh, you know, checking on folks. And, and uh, if that's you, thank God for you, <laughs> because that's not in everybody. Uh, you might think it's something easy. Uh, it's a whole lot easier for me to go see somebody in person than it is sometimes to pick up the phone. Uh, it's just, I'm not, never have been a phone person. And, uh, but uh, I just appreciate people like that so much because I know that means a lot uh, to people, especially our shut-ins and people who haven't been able to see each other for a while. But here we think about uh, growing up in Christ. Some have said it's not how much you know, but how much you grow. That's a pretty good little statement. But I want you to hold your place here. We'll be right back. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 8. 1 Corinthians 8. We'll be right back in Ephesians 4 here in just a second. 1 Corinthians 8 is an interesting little passage here. Both of these books written by the Apostle Paul. In verse number 1, it says, Now it's touching things offered unto idols. We know that we all have knowledge. Now, it's not how much you know, but how much you grow. That's important. He says here, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 8, in verse number 1, that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. But charity, which is love, agape love, edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Here we see something important about knowledge. First of all, in verse 1, knowledge puffeth up. Some people are proud, and they're proud in the wrong sense. They're proud of their knowledge. They know, uh, they might be book smart, but uh, they lack common sense, or they lack a lot of other things. Or they might be proud about their knowledge about a certain topic or a certain hobby. And uh, knowledge can puff up if we're not careful. But charity, charity edifies. Charity builds up that agape love that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, talks about the importance of having charity and how it can be a blessing to other people and uh, build them up. But notice verse 2. It says, If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. So for those people who think they know something and they're maybe puffed up already, none of us know anything as we ought to. In other words, we can always improve on the things that we know. But notice verse 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Now this is the main thing right here. The main thing is that we know God and that he knows us. And he calls us by name. It's having that personal relationship with him. That's the most important thing. 
That's the thing that if, if God knows us and calls us by name and we're his child, we've been saved, we've been washed in the blood, that's where it starts. But then as a Christian, we need to do what Paul said, uh, as he said under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that I may know him. Now we need to get to know God. He knows us, but now we need to take the time to get to know him. So knowledge is important. But someone has said this, what you don't know can't hurt you. You heard that said before? But you know what you do know can also hurt you. What you don't know can hurt you. You think about salvation. If you don't know what's right, you don't know the way to God, you don't know how to be saved, that can definitely hurt you because you're not going to get saved. People need to hear someone give them the truth. But what you do know can also hurt you. As we see there in 1 Corinthians 8, 1, it can puff up. Ecclesiastes 1.18 says, He that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Sometimes the more you know, the worse you feel. Now, to give you a short little illustration of that, I don't care which news channel you, you like, you watch it long enough and you get your head full of the knowledge of stuff that's out there, you're probably not going to be feeling pretty good about things <laughs> even before too long. Knowledge can increase sorrow if you're not careful. So we need to make sure that above everything else we have charity. We're going to talk here about uh, growing. It's good to know the Bible, but some people get so hung up on knowledge and doctrine. Doctrine is simply what the Bible teaches. They get so hung up on some of the, the little intricacies of the Bible that they neglect the most important thing, and that is what do I do with it? How do I apply it to my life? And how does this food, this nourishment, this bread of life, this uh, milk from God's word, how does it help me to grow? Because that's the ultimate measure in life. Now, let me give you the points here to the message. At, back to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look here at each of these four verses. Each one's pretty simple. First verse, verse 13 of Ephesians 4. We are to grow up to be, all of us are to grow up to be mature Christians. But we are to grow up to maturity in stature. There's four things we're to grow up to be mature in. One is in stature. Verse 13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, there are homes that that do this. Our home didn't quite do it this way, but there are homes that track the growth of each child. You might have done it in your home. They get a little mark, maybe on a door jam or something, or on a little wall. As that each birthday, that they, they stand up against the wall and they try to stand a little tall. And you put a ruler up there and you put a mark. I don't know if y'all ever did that. We didn't do that because we just kind of. There were six of us in the house, so we just kind of used each other and thought, "Well, I'm taller than you. I'm taller than you." And then as we got a little bit older. Our guide, our stature, our measurement we had, uh, we had a hanging dining room light. And I still remember the day that I could hit, uh, my head could hit the tip of that light. Because the table was kind of small, even though we had eight of us in the family, we never sat down at the table there to eat. We'd eat in the living room or whatever. But we, the table was moved over and I could walk under and I was like, oh, my head, it can hit that light. And I thought, boy, I was really tall. And within a year... My nose actually was hitting the middle of the light. I mean, I just shot up. That was my stature. I was growing physically. Now, the word stature can mean height. It can be talking about growing up in stature that way. But it also is referring to reputation that is gained by ability or achievement. Now, listen to what verse 13 says again. It says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, that's a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, growing up, we would use, I would use my brothers and sisters as a guide to see how tall I was, and then eventually it was my mom, and then we all, I got taller than my mom, and that was my guide. But you know what? This verse here says our guide is not to be one another. Well, I'm more spiritually mature than maybe this person. And this person might say, well, they're, I'm more spiritually mature than that person you know, than, than he is. And we might compare ourselves with each other, but that's not a good thing to do. 
Our comparison should always be Jesus Christ. Amen. So that we grow up into the perfect man. That's him. To the measure, that is our measurement, the stature and fullness of Christ. Am I completely like Jesus in everything in my life? I talked, I think it was Sunday, uh, my sermons are kind of running together. But I talked about the cup, you know, you jostle the cup. What comes out of the cup? But when you get jostled, hopefully Jesus comes out. But you know, there's days we all have a bad day from time to time. We all get a little short-tempered or... You know, get uh, a little irritable, and uh, I was that way, uh, I think it was Tuesday, yesterday, or Monday, and I felt irritable, and I just, uh, I woke up, uh, it was a bad thing, I had a computer problem, Elizabeth had some computer issue, and I thought it was going to be a quick fix, it took me two hours to get the thing fixed on her phone, and it was really irritating, and I could just feel my spirit, and I, I the Lord kept reminding me of that sermon about being jostled, and I said, Lord, you're not spilling out here. <laughs> you're not spilling out. I'm not full of you. You're not spilling out now. I've, I, I've got you know anger or something. And I told Becky, I said, I'm just kind of irritable right now. She just took the St. John's board and handed it over. She goes, you need one of those. I said, I think I need 12 of those. <laughs> That's the way I feel right now. Uh, St. John's board is a, is a really good thing uh, you know, for stuff like that occasionally. But anyway... Uh, that's the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. That is what we are to go by. You've heard people say, you know, when someone's getting a new job or maybe in another situation, say, man, you've got some big shoes to fill. Well, guess what? Whose shoes are we supposed to fill? Jesus's. Can't be any bigger than those, can you? That is our goal as a Christian. Now, if we don't have that as our goal, then what goal do we have? Just to try to be better than this little peon of a person here or this little peon of a person here. No, that's not going to get us anywhere. We need to, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we can be grow up into the perfect man, the mature individual. But notice the next verse, verse 14. We are not only to grow up to maturity and stature, we're to grow up in maturity and stability. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Now there are those who, uh, by cunning craftiness or by deceit or whatever other means that are not legit, they are waiting and they are ready to lead the immature Christian astray. This is a re another reason why we need to be grown up in the faith. Many immature believers are led into false cults. I remember when I first came here, uh, I was talking to Preacher John. Uh, we were talking about this. I think we were, this is the first time we went up to the radio station. We were just talking about things. And I was just so amazed. You know, I was like, Preacher, you just don't find very often somebody, been, they've been at one church for 30 years. You know? And it was 30 years at that time. And he was heading on to his, finishing up his 31st. And I thought, you just don't find that hard anymore. And there's a few places, but not very often. I said, you know, of all the things that you saw, what are the things that maybe frustrated you the most? And I remember him saying this. He goes, he's kind of, yeah, there's people I preach to, and I preach to, and I preach to, and they'd be in the church for years, hearing the same truth. And something happens, they get upset, and they leave, and they go to a church that's not even of like faith. How does that happen? And we were talking about, you know, how in the world does something like that happen? But that's what it's talking about here. They have no stability. They were sitting under the preaching of God's word, hearing the truth year in and year out, but somewhere along the line, they did not internalize it. They did not see their goal was not just to come to church. Their goal was supposed to measure to the fullness of the stature of Christ, and it's to be just like Jesus every single day of their life. And that means to get to know his word and have that personal relationship with him. But as you do that, you're also, as you mature, you're going to get stability. And you're not going to be comfortable sitting under some false doctrine. You're not going to be comfortable sitting under a woman preacher. You're not going to be comfortable sitting under a church that teaches you can be baptized to be saved. You're not going to be comfortable sitting under a church that teaches works by salvation. 
You're not going to be comfortable in anything like that. We're just a church that just says, come as you are, leave as you came, and we're going to be entertained, and we're going to have a big old worship you know, service here. You're not going to be comfortable unless you're getting the truth of the gospel. That's when you're going to be comfortable. Now, I've talked to other preachers. I told we were telling each other this. We were talking back and forth, and I said, you know, that's interesting because you're not the first preacher that said that to me. Now that's sad. But each one of us have a responsibility to grow up and be stable in the faith. We may be amazed at why some people don't believe. You ever been amazed at that? Man, what is holding them back? Why don't they just get saved? But you know what's even more amazing? Is what some people will believe. How in the world can you even think that's right? That's sometimes more amazing. If a Christian is not rooted and growing, if they're not rooted and growing, they're apt to believe almost anything and they're going to become easy prey for the devil. I was out trying to get the garden caught up the last couple of days. Some of you probably were doing the same thing. Uh, it's hard getting in between all this rain. I'm hoping it's held off for a little while, but I think we're supposed to get a little bit tomorrow. As long as it's a little bit, that would be good. But uh, I was thinking about uh, some plants that I transplanted. Now, I'm not the best transplanter in the world. Uh, I'm still perfecting that art. And, uh, but I put some plants in the ground, and I put the tomatoes in Monday, and I put some squash. I moved them around yesterday. And the squash, no sooner did I move uh, the squash, and I mean, I dug way, I didn't even disturb the root system. I dug way down and moved them over and uh, put the whole thing down and packed it down real nicely, and it looked really great for about two hours. And as I was out there, and we finally got you know, some uh, grass clippings and stuff underneath of it, and around, some of those, I went over today and looked at they looked pathetic. <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. Now, the tomatoes looked pathetic yesterday. And I just started praying, I was like, Lord, there is too much time and effort and energy invested in these things. We need some tomatoes. We need these things to come through. And uh, like, can you do something? I don't know what's going on with these things. I mean, what else do they need? They don't need water. <laughs> we got two feet of water underneath the soil, you know. I don't know they don't need that. I don't know what's going on with them. They just look like they didn't, you know, they're just falling. Today, they're starting to perk up a little bit. So I thought, oh, maybe that was it. Maybe we just need to dry out a little bit. And uh, so I'm hoping the squash maybe will come back tomorrow. But you know what the problem is? We call it hardening off. You harden off plants when you transplant them. Well, these plants have already been hardened off. This is the second time they've been hardened off. Uh, so the tomato has been hardened off now three times. <laughs> so they're going to be really hardy tomato plants, I think. And, uh, but you know, that's the way a Christian is too. Sometimes our roots get a little disturbed. And when that happens, if our roots are not where they need to be, we need to get them down deep once again. Sometimes we start to wither. And we start to shrivel up as a Christian. What happens is we're not stable like we need to be. When that happens, we need the nutrients and the nutrition from God's Word. We need to start getting our roots down deeper again. And just uh, everything, the wind, whatever God wants to bring our way, the winds of change and trials and tribulations and the storms, whatever happens, we just need to allow the Lord to have His way in our heart and life so our roots can get deeper, our branches, our leaves, everything will get stronger, and we will grow up into maturity like He intended Look at verse 15, if you would. Verse 15, we are to grow up to maturity in speech. He says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Speaking the truth in love. You ever wonder why there's so much division in Christianity? I get to ask that question so many times. It's a good question. Yeah, well, if, you're, if your religion's right, then why are there so many different religions? Now, if you really thought about that, you know, is the devil going to attack, is the devil going to show up at a bar and start attacking people at the bar? No, he's already got them under control. Why is he going to show up there? It's not like showing up at a church service. That's where he's going to fight. He's going to fight the people that are hitting, hitting the altar saying, Lord, you know, be merciful to me, a sinner. Help me. I want to grow in your grace. I want to do what's right. You're just putting the target on your back. That's a good thing, though. Because now you can take the shield of faith and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
You are on the offensive. You and God make a majority. That's what David did when he charged at Goliath. You know, this nine, at least nine feet, nine inch tall guy. And here's David, a little ruddy youth, 17 year old guy with a slingshot and a stone in his hand. And he's running that. He hasted towards the enemy. He didn't cower away and say, what am I going to do with this stone and this sling? This guy's a man of war from his youth. No, he said the battle is the Lord's. And he charged at it. That's the way we need to handle it too. But there's so many divisions and problems and difficulties in church. A lot of times it's because of our immaturity in our speech. The immaturity in our speech can cause hurt feelings. And hurt feelings are sometimes hard to get over. You know, I remember when I first started coming to church, and I'm sure you probably have thought the same thing if you're honest. When you started going to church, if you remember back, when you first started going, you're like, man, I'm getting serious about this. I'm just going to do right. I'm going to get serious about my church attendance. I'm going to get serious about the Bible. I'm going to get serious about prayer. I'm going to start going right. And it's almost like you just, for whatever reason, you think everybody who's in church loves Jesus. Now, you might not have been as naive as I was, but that was naive. I was like, everybody loves Jesus. Everybody's reading their Bible. Everybody's praying for an hour a day. You know, sweet hour of prayers we just sang a moment ago. Everybody's doing it. And then I started finding out that wasn't the case. Everybody gets along. <laughs> started finding out that wasn't the case. And I got a little disillusioned. Because of my immaturity. But you know what God showed me? God showed me that part of the problem was also the immaturity of the other people that were there. And we're all supposed to be in the same game together, fighting on the same side against the enemy of the world and the devil, and against the enemy of our own flesh. And we're supposed to be unified together, helping one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, because we all have those down times. And as we come together, we need to watch very carefully our speech. The Bible has a lot of things to say about uh, our words. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I just speak my mind. Well, that's not always a good thing. Sometimes silence is golden. It's better to be quiet. I remember my brother-in-law telling me a story, and I think I might have shared this with you before. He was at a job he didn't know. He was put in, a, I don't know how he got it, but he was put in a supervisor position. And uh, anyways, he was supervisor. He didn't have a clue what these people were supposed to be doing underneath of it. So what he would do is they'd get in a meeting, he's like, so what do y'all think we ought to do about this? And they'd get all these, he's like, he didn't answer, he didn't respond, he just stayed quiet. And you know, everybody underneath it. Now, what he would eventually do is he would listen to all of their stuff, and then he would take maybe the two or three best ideas that he thought, and they'd kind of vote on it, and they would go with it, and that way everyone had a part in it. And uh, but he, I, he, I remember him telling me that, as he would just sit there and be quiet and listen. They all thought he knew everything that there was to know about this particular job. You know why? Because of his silence. Sometimes it's better to be silent and be thought a fool than to speak up and remove all doubt. Silence is golden. It's important to guard our speech. But not only are we childlike in our speech, we're sometimes childlike in our response when we hear somebody speak. What we need to do, we say it this way, we say, you know, we need to develop some thicker skin. And as Christians, we ought to have some thick skin. We ought to realize that no one, even when someone curses us, and I'm not necessarily saying cuss words, but they're cursing us, they're saying something bad against us. The Bible talks about that and says, you know, you need to consider also that you yourself have cursed others. You said bad things about others. So don't take it to heart. Don't take it so personal. That's something that we need to guard against. We do need to speak the truth, but it must be. Be in love. Speaking the truth in love. Truth without love is just a cruel master and it's brutal. Love without truth is empty sentimentality and leads to eventually anarchy. And that's what we're seeing today. You know, oh, we have so much compassion, so much compassion. 
But there's no truth. So now we see all these anarchists everywhere because they have no moral compass. God's word should be our moral compass. And lastly, verse 16, we're to grow up to maturity in service. It says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working, that's the energetic working, in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So we're to grow up in maturity in service. Now, the Bible tells us by love, serve one another. That's what we're supposed to do. So that love comes into our speech, it comes into our service. And the word, if you see a little word there in the middle of verse 16, that joint, it says compacted by that which every joint supplies. We have joints in our body. Now, some of our joints are wearing out. You know, as you get older, they just tend to wear out. But every joint is important. when It's supposed to operate in a certain way. That's the way God made it. Now, over time, it starts to deteriorate. Other problems come in. Sometimes you need to have surgery. But that word, the Greek word that's used there for joint, is actually the word harmos. And this is where we get the word harmony from. So what it's saying here is that mature Christians are supposed to work in harmonious interaction with each other, just like the joints of the body are supposed to operate with the other parts of your body. So we're supposed to do these things. There was a, a cathedral in England that was bombed uh, during World War II. And it had done a lot of damage to the cathedral. And there was a statue that there were some students who decided to uh, pitch in their time and they were trying to get everything back together uh, and restore everything they could possibly restore. But there was a statue of Jesus that happened to be in this particular cathedral. And they put the statue, it was broken, it had fallen over, it had broken. They were able to piece most of it back together, except the hands, both the hands, I don't know if it was a statue like this or what it was. But both of the hands were damaged beyond any repair whatsoever. So what they had is a statue of Jesus with hands missing. So they didn't know what to do about it because this was a really historic cathedral here that they were working in. What they ended up doing was putting a sign down below the statue. And on that sign, here's what it says. Jesus has no hands but ours. Now, there's a lot of truth in that. I'm not for having a statue of Jesus in a church. But there's a lot of truth in that statement. As we serve one another, Jesus has no hands but our hands. He has no feet but our feet. He has no mouth but our mouth. God wants to use us, and he wants us all to grow up in Christ, to be mature in Christ, so that he can use us as he planned to use us when we got saved. So may growth be our goal as a Christian. May that be our ultimate goal is we keep Christ. He is the, the stature and fullness of Christ. That is what we're aiming for each and every day of our life. And you're never going to attain it this side of heaven. So don't get discouraged, but just keep that as your goal. And when you fail, get back up and keep pressing towards it once again. That's what God wants us to do. Let's all stand and we'll have a word of prayer. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, we just simply ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? That's the most important thing to get said. Do you know that for sure? If you don't, we would like to show you from the Bible how you can get that settled once and for all. I'm going to ask you, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, if there's anyone here who would say, if I die this minute, I really don't know for sure I'd go to heaven, but would you pray for me? If you would say that, would you indicate that by lifting your hand real high? Put it right back down. Look around, don't see any hand. There might be somebody even watching on Facebook or YouTube who maybe would say that. You can know Christ your Savior by asking Him by faith to save you. Simply do what He tells you in the Word of God. You must be born again. Now, Christian, how about you? Are you as grown up as God wants you to be? We all tend to be somewhere different in our Christian growth. And we need to be patient with one another and work with one another. But the goal for all of us should be the same, to be just like Jesus. 
I hope that's your goal today. Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for your goodness to us, and I pray that you'll bless uh, our invitation time now. And Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, since there's not many of us here, if you'd like to come and pray, I think we're going to, even if you don't feel comfortable tonight, we're probably going to start a Sunday praying for these cards again. Uh, these cards, of course, are lost individuals, um, names of people that we know or we believe that are lost. I'd rather be wrong uh, and assume they're lost and assume they're safe and be wrong in that way. So uh, anyway, those cards here, if you'd like to come pray for them, I encourage you to do that. But maybe you just like to come and pray and say, Lord, be with our nation, be with our country. Or maybe you'd like to come and pray and say, Lord, help me to be that mature Christian. Help me to be that the one that strives to get to where Jesus is. What song are we singing? 250, as we sing. Someday you'll hear. 